Hello everyone, hope all of you are doing well. In today's session, we are going to cover a topic on Plato's hostility towards art. Now, this particular topic is from literary criticism and theory. In case for those of you who have not watched my previous sessions on block one's important topic, you can go ahead and watch those topics from the playlist of literary criticism and theory, which I have created in the channel playlist category. And in today's session, this particular topic will carry a huge weightage for your upcoming preparation. That is the upcoming term and examination, the June term and examination 2023. So today's test session will discuss it entirely so that you can prepare this question from a set type perspective. Also important uh, announcement for all the viewers that in case if you are a vivid listener of good stories and you like stories on love and sacrifice, then do go ahead and consider listening to the story that I have given in the description the first link you love this story and now without any further ado let's get started now before we go ahead and understand why plato despised art and considered it inferior it's very important to understand a little bit about the background of plato now we all know that plato was a disciple of socrates who is considered one of the most famous greek philosopher of all time okay now plato in himself he was the founder of platonic school of thought and academy the first institution of higher learning in western world now, we all have also heard about the Greek philosopher Aristotle. Aristotle in itself was a Plato student who studied in that particular academy. Now, the notable works of Plato includes works like Apology, Republic, Ion, Symposium and Phaedrus. Now, in this particular session, you will hear a lot of reference of Republic because in that particular work, he has mentioned his idle state of a particular society, which does not include poets in particular. So let's go ahead and understand what were Plato's views on art. In this regard, the first point that you need to mention in your answers is that art is imitation. Now, Plato viewed art of all kinds, which included poetry, theater, painting as inferior copies of the ultimate reality. Now, in this regard, he mentioned a particular word mimesis. Mimesis in Greek thought meant making of something which was already present. All right, in Plato's definition, mimesis means making a copy of some original. Now, next that we need to understand and we need to mention in this particular point is that Plato divided the entire world into two parts. Now, the first part in his understanding was physical realm that we can see in front of us. It comprises of worldly objects which were constantly changing and were imperfect. The second one was kind of important that is spiritual realm. Now, this spiritual realm that which cannot be seen, it exists beyond the material world. It is unchanging and perfect idle realm of forms and ideas. Now, according to Plato, worldly objects are imitative copies or images of this idle forms. Now, try to understand this particular point very nicely. The two realms that he have mentioned, the physical realm and the spiritual realm, according to him, all that is present in the spiritual realm is in original form. And the things and the things and the materials that are present in the physical realm, which are constantly changing and imperfect, are actually copies of the objects which are present in the spiritual realm. All right. So poetry, painting, theater and other art forms are in turn imitative copies of the worldly objects. So in this regard, if we understand this, that means all this thing which is included in art were actually copied from something which is again a copy of a particular object. The second point in justifying the Plato's hostility towards art is that art encourages emotions and passion and let them rule over intellect. Now here we need to understand that Plato believed intellect and rational thoughts are superior to emotions. As I told you that he was a perfect intellectual, he was a Greek philosopher. Plato said that art resulted in emotional arousal and swayed people from finding the ultimate truth. Now, here we need to understand that poetry and drama are not governed by rationality. They encourage passion and allow it to rule over intellect. Now, this to some extent might be true because we listen to poetry or we read poetry or we watch drama and theater in order to arouse aesthetic feelings in ourselves. Okay, so that provides a kind of pleasure which cannot be described. But again, that is far away from reality. So in that perspective, Plato is some, some of some of 
some extent he is right. Now again the rulers and the helpers of Plato's utopia as stated in Republic are not mere administrators and military strategists but are philosophers who have deep understanding of the nature of things. Now as I have mentioned in one of the notable works of Plato that is Republic he has mentioned his perfect ideal state of society. Now in that particular ideal state the administrators and the military strategists are not poets or not dramatists or not you know playwrights they are what they are philosophers who have deep understanding of the nature of things and who are more close to reality according to Plato. Plato believed that the ultimate reality was available to philosophers who saw things beyond illusion. Now this is an accusation to the people who are related to art. He believed that the people who are too much into art are in the state of illusion they are in the state of a particular you know a particular state which is far away from reality now according to plato one has to reject falsehood misconceptions and popular notions to know the ultimate truth which the artist cannot do the idle state is ruled by philosophers who have received the right type of education in this educational system plato said there was no room for teaching of poetry and drama as they neither created a strong character nor provided any knowledge of the world the third point that we need to mention in this regard which again affirms Plato's hostility towards art is that art leads to immorality. Now how a person can be immoral through art? Let us understand this with this particular point. Now poetry of Greek poets such as Homer showed gods and heroes with moral weaknesses and sometimes even savagery. Now if you are into Greek literature you will see a lot of stories or a lot of myths where gods have committed sins. Okay and even the heroes of those particular dramas they are you know they are sinful okay they have some uh, nature of themselves which are not morally correct now plato said that such examples would not result in the foundation of worthy character now if a person watches this type of dramas or reads this type of poetry he will be saying that the idol state which is the heroes in the drama or the gods that they worship even if they are sinful or they can commit a particular you know mistake then why not the mortal beings commit the same now here Plato believed that the enacting plays was harmful because in acting a person gave up his own behavior and nature and adopted the behavior of another character who is often immoral and has vices. Now art created a moral degrading effect according to Plato. Now the final point in this particular answer that you need to mention will sound very much an extension of the first point that is art is imitation. So the final point is art is an untruthful representation of reality. Now in this case Plato said that the artist not only imitates the imperfect objects of the world but also pretends to know things he actually has no understanding. Let me come to the first part of this particular statement that I have just mentioned that artist not only imitates the imperfect objects of the world. Now now, as you have seen that in a couple of minutes back that I have just mentioned in while discussing the point art is imitation that Plato has divided the world into two particular realms that is physical realm and spiritual realm and he mentioned that all the objects that are present in the physical realm which are changing and which are temporary in nature are particularly copies of the objects which are present in spiritual realm which are actually original in nature. Now what the artists do in Plato's opinion is that they create copies of the objects of the physical realm. So that's why he considered them to be inferior because they copy the already copied objects of the physical realm which were copied off from the spiritual realm. Okay now let's come to the second point where he says that they pretend to know things where they have actually no understanding. Now in this particular case Plato mentioned the classic example of Homer. Now he said that Homer was not a military general and has no war experience okay but he portrays heroes in war in his work. Nor was Homer a reputed teacher but yet he gives wisdom on everything. Now this particular point holds some grounds in Plato's opinion because according to him Plato concluded that there was no justified role for the poet, the dramatist or the minstrel in his idle state as they are all the misrepresentators of truth. Therefore poets were banished from Plato's utopian state. You need to understand that Plato's point of view from this particular perspective sounded very much 
justifiable because he believed that in case of homer if we take the example of homer a person who is giving you knowledge or understanding about wars about military strategies and generals have not experienced in himself the particular scenario then how come he can give the right representation of that particular fact that's why he considered that artists in particular were misrepresentators of truth so this is the video guys i hope you are an insight regarding this particular topic plato's hostility towards art which is included in your block 2 of your literary criticism and theory paper that is your mg5 paper in case if you have any other doubt regarding this particular topic do feel free to comment in the comment section i'll definitely try to address it and yes you can find the notes and analysis of this particular session in the description link also do consider to check out the beautiful story on love and sacrifice which is narrated by me which is given in the description the link of that particular video is given in the description the first link in itself so also do consider to give comments on that so that i can understand what you felt about that story till we meet next time god bless you and thank you all